Looks like some of them had a real Thanksgiving. They ain't here this morning. They must uh, still be enjoying their turkey. But uh, praise God, maybe they'll be back tonight. If not, a lot of them will be back next Sunday, I feel sure. But praise God, I thank you for being here this morning. I cannot fuss about people going off once in a while. Because I, sometimes I do fuss and I have to be quiet. <laughs> not you. No, you know I fuss, sister. I want to be church. Amen. Praise God. I think this is the best place for us to be, don't you? Amen. Amen. Turn with me to 2 Peter this morning, chapter 3, if you will. I, I was looking out, and sometimes you look out at the news and you see the things that are going on around us, uh, shootings in malls, uh, it's just one thing right after another. The old world's in a mess. This, uh, it's not safe to go anywhere anymore. I mean, uh, uh, yesterday there was a guy right down here below Spencer, where you turn off to go into Spencer there, uh, changing a tire. And he got killed. I mean, you know, he had a flat tire on the side of the interstate and got killed. Uh, we just never know what's going to happen, what's going to take place. I know Sister Everhart, the uh, son, Jeff, uh, his friend was going after her son and she got killed just last week, week before last, and head on crash, just came over her lane and killed her. Uh, we're faced with many things in this world. The devil's running on rampage right now. He knows he's in the last days. I wish the Christian people could see that. We're supposed to be the ones that's aware of it. We're supposed to be the ones that are seeing what's going on, but it seems like to me the devil knows it. He's stirring up evil minds. I mean, uh, I was reading this morning and... Uh, and there was one place in there that was talking about a guy that was going to testify against uh, Hillary Clinton about the uranium that she had sold to Russia. And uh, he got T-boned as he was going to a meeting just this week. Uh, and the car backed up and took off. And just so happened he was on the passenger side rather than the driver's side. Buzzy probably would have been killed. There's things going on in, in our politics and uh, the devil is into everything. It seems like me. He's into churches. He's into everything. He's taking control. And, and the epistles and the things that you look in the books of the word, uh, they find, you find all these things were taking place then. But it seems like to me there's more of, of people and there's more things going on today than I've ever seen in my life. It's almost a scary time to bring up children and have to send your children to school with what's going on. Uh, we're living in uh, perilous times. And perilous times means that... Uh, devil has taken control of many people. Thank God this morning if you're a Christian. Amen. Amen. Thank God this morning if your name's written down in the land of Lord. Lord. You might be living in uh, perilous times, but you are a pilgrim walking through this land to a better home place. So let me tell you right now. And I believe that with all my heart. In chapter 3 of 2 Peter here, I hope every one of you has found it. It says, this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds, by way of remembrance, that we that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and the and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord our, and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. And I believe people are saying that today. I can see it. I, can, I believe that people are, uh, don't fear God. They don't fear the, the, the power of God. They don't fear what God can do unto them. Uh, and God's not going to come down and, and take their lives because they don't serve him. We all know that. We know that things are happening, uh, it falls on the just and the unjust the same. That's the reason we see Christians being, uh, lives being snapped out. We see things that are taking place in our lives and all these things that are taking place. But I want to tell you something. We as a child of God, and we as serving God, need to look out and see what's going on around us. Sometimes I think we put on blinders and we really don't see the things that are taking place around us. 
Now the prophets here and the apostles had come together. They were saying, hey, we're, we're looking at it through both spiritual eyes. And we're seeing what's going on in our world right now. And as you as Christians this morning, I want you to come together with your brothers and sisters and with the pastors that really believe and those that really know that the time is at hand and Jesus is coming is near. And we need to take a good look at what's taking place in our world right now. We need to take a good look at what is uh, coming to pass. And if you're not saved this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, uh, your life is in want and you need a God and you need this God worse than anything else in your life. And you need to realize that these things that are happening around you, they're not going to get better. Uh, people say, oh, I think things are going to get better. And I, I see things getting better in our world. I don't. I don't ever see anything getting better. It looks like to me it's getting worse and worse. And the Bible says that, that it's going to wax worse and worse. And I can see it coming on. Uh, it's not safe. For you to go anywhere anymore, it looks like. It's not safe for you to step out of your house hardly anymore. Because the devil is on a rampage and he's trying to steal the very elect. He's trying to steal those that have something with God. He's trying to take them out so they won't win more lost souls. But I want to tell you something, church. We need to look out and take our blinders off and see what's going on. And say unto God, help me to serve you. Help me to win this loss at any cost. God, help me to stand for you and see what's going on around me. And I believe without a shadow of a doubt, uh, if we'll do that, then we'll be blessed people for it. It says in verse 5, for this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto the fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering. Hallelujah. Toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. I thought about that as I was reading that and asking God what to preach on and asking God what we need to stand on. You and I, sometimes we get busy in the things that's going on in our world. Especially if you're real young or you're real old. You get tied up, if you're real young, you get tied up with things that are happening in your life and you really forget about the important things. Whenever you're old, you get tied up with the way you feel and the way you hurt and you forget about what's going on around you. Come on. Uh, the old devil has a way of really working against us. He has a way of trying to get our minds to get concentrated on one thing. And trying to get us to think about how bad we feel or how bad we are and how bad things are to us. And whenever you're young, and I know the other young people, most of them, well, there's still some young over here. We've got a few young over here. Whenever you're young, you're thinking about, you know, I'm wanting to get married and I'm wanting to think, I want to uh, prosper all these things and I want all these things to happen in my life. And, and our minds are set on those things. And sometimes I think the devil does that to us to keep us from really getting our mind set on where it needs to be. Those things of us prospering here on this earth are important in some ways. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I know that you need a home to live in. I know you need a car to drive. I know you need these things. And I'm not putting you down for having those things. And I know that whenever you get old, you're going to have more aches and pains because I've got there. I feel them sometimes. I know that I'm uh, not, I don't feel like I used to whenever I was young. You're there, and I understand what you're talking about. But then again, what does the devil do to us? He tries to get us to think about everything that's going on with our lives, and we forget really what is most important to us, that there's a God that loves us, and this is the shortest life we're going to ever live in. This is the shortest place you're going to ever be. Your eternity is forever and ever and ever and ever. If I can just keep going on and on, that's how long eternity is. And we worry more about this life than we are about our eternity. We get more set on what's going on around us and the things that are taking place here. But I want to tell you something. Whenever I read on a little further here, this old 
place is going to burn up. It's going to come back and it's going to be pure again. And praise God, I plan on living in that next life. I plan on living for God. Has me to live in that life where there's no more pain, there's no more suffering. I don't have to worry about all the things we worry about here. You see, that's what the devil's doing to us right now. He's trying to get us to get our minds corrupted with our thinking and, and saying, well, we need to make this world better. We need to make this world better. I don't see a better coming. I don't think we can make it better except for through Jesus Christ. If we had a world, well, <clears throat> excuse me, if we had a worldwide revival of Jesus and God's anointing and God's blessings, if it started in the Middle East and started waving towards us, if it started in America and started going towards the Middle East, then praise God, I can say we can have a change. But I don't see people's hearts wanting to change and turn over to God. They're wanting to turn over to their little gods. They're not wanting to turn over to the God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. The one that hung on that old rugged cross and give you your salvation. That's not the one they're wanting to turn over to. But they're wanting to turn over to the gods that they can love. A God that they can think they can depend on. But they can't. That's where our world is today. The Muslim world despises us. They hate us. But if they could find Jesus, if we could let them find Jesus, I believe this world would come together. But if I read the word of God right, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And we're not going to see that. So what do I need to do? You're saying, Brother Ken, you're preaching on this, but you haven't told me what I need to do then. You haven't told me, do I need to dig a hole and, and bury myself in the ground until Jesus comes? No. Do I need to build, pour me a big cement slab and, and pour cement all around me where if, Jesus, if uh, Jesus don't come for a while, that I'll be protected? No. Do I need to make sure that I've got oxygen at home, that if they take an atomic bomb and, 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 and I'm uh, uh, safe away from the atomic bomb, that I'll need that oxygen, that I'll have some oxygen? No. Mm. Come on. I thought about this. I thought, you know, the people are, they're building things now. They're building so many things to, to protect them whenever this whole world's on fire. This whole world is, is turning and, and burning and churning and, and they think they're going to be protected and they think everything's going to be all right. Well, I'm going to read to you here in just a few minutes. Everything that is corrupt in this world right now, everything that's not pure before God is going to be burnt no more pain, no more sufferings, no more colds. That's hard to believe now. But whenever this thing burns up, all that's going to burn up with it. All that's going to, it's going to be such a fervent heat that all those uh, sicknesses and uh, the cancers and all those things are going to burn right up. God's already got a plan. Mm -hmm. How can we change the plan? I don't want to change the plan, do you? No. Praise God, I want to be in the middle of the plan. I want to be right in the center of God's will. I want to be right where God wants me. That whenever this old world's on fire, praise God, I can be at the marriage supper of the Lamb or be behind Him on one of them white horses. Whenever He rides into the sanctuary, yeah. God, that I can be on one of those charges charges out with Him. Yes, thank because the saints of God are going to be able to do that. Thank God. Verse 8 says, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is like a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning the promise as men tell slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. In other words, he's not coming whenever everybody's expecting. Right. Come on. There's a lot of people says, you know, say this right now is the time for the Lord. The, the Christian should know. The Christian should know because he's not coming as a thief to them. He's coming as a redeemer. Yeah. A savior. Yes. And that's what I'm trying to tell you this morning. Get the blinders off and see what's getting ready to take place before your eyes. Because Jesus is coming as your savior, your redeemer. Your lover, the one that cares for you. Whenever this old world, nobody here cares for you, nobody loves you, praise God, you've got a God 
that loves you and cares for you, that blesses you. You got a God that uh, you say, Brother Kim, you just said sometimes you hurt. Well, praise God. The hurt don't mean a thing whenever you've got a God that loves you. Right. The pain don't mean a thing because God can wipe all that away. Praise God. We're serving a God that loves us enough. I know I've heard people say, well, I don't understand how God would put cancer on somebody, how God would cause this to happen to somebody. I've seen people with cancer and never heard them complain a bit because God was with them. God's anointing was with them. I went up and prayed with Debbie's brother. He would give God the glory. He said, I don't even take those pain pills. They're all over in the cloth, over in the cabinet. Don't even take them. So I ain't been hurting. I ain't had to take them. Man, that's God's glory. Give God the glory. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's giving God the glory. Whenever you know you got bone cancer, you don't even have to take a pain pill. I've never seen many people with bone cancer that didn't have to take some pain pills. But he never would. He just said, I don't need it. I'm fine. I'm fine. God's anointing. You see, that's where we don't trust sometimes. That's where we don't really trust this God sometimes. I mean, whenever we, we, we go to the pill bottle and we grab the pill bottle, we say, well, I'm, I've got a little headache, so I'll grab the pill bottle. And what we need to be doing is giving God the glory and say, God... Take this pain and let it be of nothing from this moment on. God, let it be, let me be made whole. You say, Brother Ken, I can call you and you can lay hands on me. You don't have to call me, praise God. If you're a Christian, praise God, you can go take that oil out of the cabinet or do whatever you want to do and lay it on your head and you can pray for yourself just as good as Brother Ken can because God loves you just as much as he loves me. God asks your prayer just as much as he asks my prayer. If you believe in faith and trust in him, God will deliver you and God will take care of you. That's what I'm telling you right now. Take the blinders off because the world's got the blinders on. They're saying, oh, healing's not for today. It was for yesterday. It was for years ago. I want to tell you something. God said he'd be with us today and forever. And praise God, the healing's still good today. You can go out here and tell people, well, that church over there believes that they believe in healing. Yes, sir, I sure do. I believe God's able to heal me. I believe he's able to take care of me. Whenever the devil says, I'm going to die, praise God, I'm going to tell the devil, I'm going to live forever because I'm going through the shadow of death. Telling them yesterday, we was riding down the road, and I said, I'm listening to this preacher on TV, and I believe it was last week or the week before that. I said, He was preaching, and I said, He preaches good, and then all of a sudden, He preached something that gets me all confused. Come on. I said, You have to eat the chicken and throw out the bones. Because I said, He'll throw you a bone every now and then. Because He said there was that the Christians weren't going to heaven. Hmm. And somebody sitting in the van said, Yeah, and said, What you going to do with that scripture? The answer with the body is to be in the presence of the Lord. Praise God. Whenever they said that, I thought to myself, that's where the Bible says that some people ain't going to know it all, but some people think they know it all. Praise God, there's only one that knows it all, and that's right. him, and praise God. Amen. Whenever we get there, it won't matter anyway. We won't have to ask him. People say, I'm going to ask him, why did this happen to me? I'm going to ask him, why did that happen to me? Whenever I get there, all I want to do is worship him and tell him, thank yeah. you, Lord, for yeah. my life. Lord. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me of my sins. I ain't worried about what happened to me because there's a God that loves me and cares for me. I'm not worried about these things. Praise the name of the Lord. The heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fever of the heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. Now, whenever it's talking about that heaven there, it's talking about the heaven where we see the airplanes fly in. That's the heavens it's talking about. It ain't talking about the heavens where God is. It ain't talking about those heavens. We, there's there's uh, different levels there, and, and I'm not talking about like preachers where they say, well, if you don't live good, you're getting one degree of heaven. If you do live good, you're getting the next degree. That ain't true either. Either you live and make it a heaven, or either you don't. There's only one place in heaven for Christians. I can tell you that right now. Praise God. And you're not going to be where God is. I can tell you that now too because there's a greater level for where God lives. And praise God, we're not going to be able to be there. We can go in, I think, the way the Word of God reads it and suck with Him or, or be with Him. But praise God, we can't live there because that's His place. Praise God. You're going to have a place of your own. And thank God for that because you know what? God's prepared it all. He's prepared it for His uh, saints. And praise God, I hope you're a saint this morning. Uh, people say, oh, but Brother Ken, I try to live right. I try to do right. Well, praise God. Quit trying and just do it. Say, God, I want to make it for home, Lord. Let me give up whatever I got to give up. Somebody asked me this week, said, well, how do I give it up? I'm going to tell you how to give it up. Whenever you get scared that you're not going to make it to heaven, praise God, you say, God, I need you to help me give it up. And I want to tell you what, whenever you get that serious with God, he'll let you lay it down and you'll pick up the heavenly things. And praise God, you'll do heavenly things rather than the sinful things. Right. I believe that with all my 
my heart because I told him I was speaking from experience because I had to do the same thing. This is where it's talking about the fire. The elements shall melt with fever the heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all the, these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? It's a question. Mm -hmm. What type of person should you be? Hmm. Seeing then that all things all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? I want you to sink that in just a few minutes. I want you to think about that a few minutes. I've heard people say, well, what comes out of a man don't make him sinful. I believe that says you all are stopping me for a bit there, don't you? That's what it says, really. On holy conversation. Stop and think about what you're saying. Whenever we're around other people, would you say what we're saying? In front of the church? Would we say what we're saying in front of the Sunday school teacher and pastor? Or would we hold back and not say those things? Hmm. I've seen people that, I can remember people whenever they used to dip snuff and smoke and all, they'd hide that from the preachers, you remember? They'd take and hide them, they'd say, whenever the preacher would come, but the one of the ladies, you know, you could get the older one and they used to dip all the time. And they would go and wash that dip out of their mouth and, and make sure they didn't have any dip on their lips whenever the preacher come in. It didn't make no difference. Because that wasn't their God. The preacher's not your God. Come on. Your brothers and sisters in here is not your God. If you meet somebody out on the street and you get mad at them and you curse them, it's the same as cursing God. Are your brother or your sister? It's no difference. I've heard people say, well, sometimes this makes me so mad it comes out of me. Hmm. So what you're saying then is the devil's in you because he had to come out. And you can take water in a barrel and you can put one drop of oil in it and it won't mix. I promise you it won't mix it. It'll spread out. You'll see it sort of spread out over the top. You'll see it move around, and then all of a sudden that oil spot will come right back. Which is right. You try to put God in a vessel that ain't clean, and it won't mix. The devil will win out every time. He'll take possession every time. If we put God in there and clean the scars and clean the deep places of our heart and our soul, if we'll say, God, you know, whenever we're asking God to sanctify, I don't know if any of you's ever done that or not, but I did. I asked God, I said, God, you sanctify me. And God, I'll clean up what I can see. God, I'll clean up what I've the way I talk, God, I'll clean up the way I act, I'll clean up the way I dress. But God, I want you to go into the deep depths of my soul. And God, I want you to clean up what I would leave behind. You ever went in and I know you men, y'all don't have to vacuum sweep and all. But my wife works bird shift, so I try to do it at the house. But yeah, I can go in sometime and I can I own my sweep and I'll vacuum. And whenever I get ready to mop, I still find trash on the floor. It's still dirty. No matter what I do, there's still some trash there whenever I get ready to mop. I can't get it all up. That's the reason I can't clean up my own soul. It takes God to come in and clean that old soul and make it pure before Him. 
He can take those things that aren't right and those things that I've hid back in there and said, well, I'm going to hold on to this and I'll hold on to these things and maybe I'll use them sometimes. He'll take, he'll take those things and he'll clean them up and, and throw them out and, and they won't be there. And that means all those things that I would leave behind won't be there anymore. It'll be clean. Be pure. And that's what he does whenever we ask him to sanctify us holy. That holy word. That holy word is what makes us pure before God. Not what we are. You say, well, Brother Ken, that's old preaching, but praise God. I'm going to tell you something. I told you this morning, I want you to take the blinders off, and I believe we need to get back to some old-timey preaching and get away from this newfangled angle thing because I believe Jesus is coming, and I believe there's going to be some people that's going to be left behind because they're not really obeying God, and they're holding on to things in their heart and their soul. They're saying, I might use them sometime, and I'm going to tell you something. What you need to do is say, God, sanctify me holy and clean me up that these Amen. things won't be in me, that I won't want to do them anymore that I'll stay pure before you and clean before you, that whenever this old world's on fire, praise God, I won't be in the middle of it, but praise God, I'll be at that marriage up to the land with you. Amen. You see, that's where we've got to be at. Yes. We've got to be there with God. Good conversation. Love. Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God. We're in the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. <coughs> Therefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace. Listen to this now. Those white robes that we're going to receive are not going to have any spot or any blemish. <coughs> but you know who he's talking to now before you got the white robe? Come on. Peter here is talking to us before we get the white robe. He says, without spot and blameless. In other words, we need to be clean before God. We need to stay holy before God. We need to keep our mind centered on God's will in our lives. No matter what's going on in this world, no matter what's taking place in this world, we can't be a part of this world. We've got to be that pilgrim that's walking beside of this world, heading <coughs> to a new home. The narrow is the way. Praise God to heaven. And praise God, you need to be on the narrow path. If you're on the wide path and you're everybody's saying everything's all right, praise God, you're going to make it. Everything's all right. Everything, just come on in and everything's going to be wonderful. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. I know a lady that, I'm going to close with this. I know a lady that wanted to talk to a minister. And her family called a minister within three quarters of a mile of this church. And she said, Preacher, I'm lost, and I won't be saved. I don't know whether he knew it or not, but she sort of had a man there staying with her that wasn't married to her son. She'd been doing some things that she shouldn't be doing. And he said, you're all right. He said, I remember you telling me whenever you got saved. He said, you're going to make it to heaven? And said, everything's all right. And at her funeral, he stood before the family and he said it took me over an hour or two to convince this woman that she was all right, that she was saved. He never asked her to pray a repenting prayer, she said, because he knew she was all right. Tell me the day you got saved. You might be able to tell me the day that you give your heart to God. But 
But my word of God says that if you've transgressed against God, there's some first works that must be done of What's your first work? What was the first thing you did to get God into your heart? You repented of your sins and that's Jesus to come into your heart. Do I believe that God forgave the woman? I believe he did. I hope he did. I pray he did. Does it put a question in my mind? It sure does. I stand before you this morning. And I don't want your blood on my hands. I want to be able to tell you that if you're not with God, you haven't repented of your sins, and Jesus is not living in your heart, you can't make heaven your home. I can't tell you whether you're saved or not. You can tell me how good you are and how good you've been and how great you are, but I can't say you're a good Christian person. And the likewise, I'm your pastor. If you're a member here, if you're not, and praise God, you're a friend of it, you call me pastor, I'm still your pastor. And you can't tell me I'm saved. Because you don't know how to live when there's not rest. But there's one that knows. And that's the one we've got to answer to. Mm -hmm. Come on. That's the one that's going to come back and this old earth is going to burn. It's going to burn till it's clean and pure. And I read over a little further. It says there's going to be a new Jerusalem. Yes. It's going to come down. Yes. And praise God. There's going to be a wall built around that new Jerusalem. And guess who's going to live in that new Jerusalem? We're going to have a new home. A new place to walk into. A new... I'm going to tell you something. We've got things promised to us. And, and yeah. some of us look around and we say, well, I just don't have nothing. I, I don't have nothing no more. I, I've got old and I don't have nothing. Praise God. The older I get, the richer I get because I'm getting close to home. I want you to know, praise God. The richer I get because I'm getting close to home. The closer we get to home, the more we're going to have because we got a God that's promised us a, a place to live, a place that's taken care of. We'll have to worry about the light because he's going to be the light. No more light bills. Now, there's going to be a stream that runs through all the time. We'll have to worry about a water bill. Praise God. You telling me I ain't richer than what I am down here? I want to tell you something. I can't give up. I can't look back but I gotta get my blinders off and I gotta look at where I'm going and say, God, deal with my heart and help me to stay true to you. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Stand with me. Hallelujah. Glory be God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory. I could go on a little further, but I'll just stop right there. It's good. Good to have every one of you here this morning. I pray that every one of you have got your blinders off and you're ready to meet Jesus. And you're looking at the world and you're seeing what's going on in the world and you're seeing the things that are taking place. And every time you see these things taking place, you're saying, Jesus is not going to be long. I realize that. Because I can tell you right now, he's not going to go back and apologize to Solomon tomorrow. He's not going to go back and apologize and stop him. We're going to go home before that happens. And I'm going to say to you this morning, if you're not ready to meet Jesus, if you don't know your name's written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, you don't know where you're going to spend eternity. I hope you make a commitment this morning here in this altar and give your heart to Jesus. He'll forgive you for every sin that you've ever committed except for blasphemies against the Holy Ghost. And I don't believe there's anybody in here who's done that. I don't feel that. I feel a sweet spirit here. I met a man one time that said he couldn't feel God anymore because he hadn't done that. And he was like he was dead. He was just like a zombie. He was 
hard. Mine. Never to know what it would be to go to hell. That would be a terrible thing, wouldn't it? But you know, there's a lot of people that are stepping out every day. I don't know whether this person out here was changing that tire, whether they were a Christian or not. I don't know whether the wreck that happened over Thomas, I don't know whether they were a Christian or not. The ones that got shot in the mall, I don't know whether they were Christians or not. But you can know today in whom you're living through this altar of prayer. If you'll come and repent of your sins and accept Jesus. And my bid to you this morning is you're not ready. Won't you come? Won't you come? Come, Holy Spirit, and deal with hearts. You have freedom to reign in this church. Come, Holy Spirit, and let your Holy Ghost anoint those hearts that are ready to meet you. As we pray this morning, this altar's open. Don't you leave the same way you came. Say, Brother Ken, I don't know how to pray if I come to that altar. Praise God, I'll come pray with you. There'll be somebody that'll be praying with you, I promise you. And I'll pray with you too. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, Lord, loving you and praising you. Lord, you know each and every heart, each and every soul that's in this place this morning, God. There'll be one here this morning that can't call you Lord and Savior, God. I'm asking you this morning, God. Let them see their need to come to this altar and repent of their sins and accept you as Lord. Jesus, I know you're soon coming. Lord, I know it's not going to be long. And Lord, I just want to be ready with all that is in me. Lord, inventory me. God, if I don't come up to where I need to be, God, show me. Because, God, I'm willing to follow in this altar with these people and pray and seek your dear face, God. I've got to make heaven my home also. And, God, I want to stay in tune with you. Help me, Lord. Help this congregation, God. Each and every one. The visitors this morning, God, touch them, God. Let them be able to say whenever they walk through the doors, it was good to have been in the house of God. God, if they're not ready, I pray, God, that they get ready before it's eternally too late. And I feel that way about every person in this house, God. Every person, including me, God. Lord, if there's anything in our life, Lord, that we need to clean up, help us to clean it up. Help us to stay pure and clean before you. God, I want to have that blood applied. That whenever you call our name, that our feet won't stay on the ground. Oh, blessed Heavenly Father, Thou art welcome in this place. Dear Heavenly Father, I love you and I praise you. Move in a special way. Jesus, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Oh, blessed Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. and everyone who's with us this morning. Praise God. Come back tonight at 6 o'clock. We'll have a service again. Shake hands and be friendly. Don't be in no hurry. Everything's going to be all right.